Hello! In this video, I'll be explaining multiple concepts in making data packs and resource packs for Dalekmon. I'll have timestamps for each section in the video, so you can easily select sections or skip through. Also, in this video, if I mention a link, it will be both a tag in the top right corner, or it will be in the description. In the video, I'll give a quick description of data and resource packs, then I'll talk about Java JSON, adding exteriors, interiors, adding dimensions to the dimensional selector, custom recipes for the round maker, and the engineer table. To start off, I'll talk a bit about data packs and resource packs. Both of these are folders that have certain files. In data packs, it's almost purely JSON files with information. In resource packs, though, they contain assets, which are things like sounds, models, textures, and more. Both of these need a pack.mc meta file. For more info on this, you can look online or check out the Minecraft wiki. Resource packs will go in your resource packs folder in your Minecraft directory, and data packs will go inside your world's data pack folder instead. Now let's go into Java JSON. Java JSON was a file format we created to allow you to edit our entity models, as we didn't want to hard code them. But it also allowed us to create complex or larger than normal blocks, like the TARDIS. To open or create your own Java JSON files, you'll need Blockbench. You will then need to install the Java JSON plugin. To install the Java JSON plugin, you'll need to go to bug.swidteam.com and then go to the installation page. We have two options to install the plugin. URL, which is an easy install, but you'll need internet at all times when you want to use it. Alternatively, you can download the file and install it that way. To install the plugin via URL, click the URL button on the Java JSON website to copy the link to your clipboard, and in Blockbench, select File and then Plugins, and click this cloud at the top with the arrow, and paste your clipboard. Then select Confirm. To install the plugin via file, instead of clicking URL, click the File button on the website, and then click the File icon in Blockbench this time. When installing via file, make sure the file is exactly named dm underscore java underscore json dot js, as Blockbench requires the file to be the same name as the plugin. With the Java JSON plugin, we're now able to import and export models. To create a new model, we must be in the modded entity format. It's easier with Java JSON to put your textures in their folders before saving the model. Java JSON supports adding what are called light maps to the model. To create a light map with your model, you simply have to add the word light map in the texture. No spaces. With Java JSON, we also have a scale modifier when exporting. This will be the overall scale of the model, but most people think it's best to have one pixel be one pixel, and setting the scale to one. Now let's talk about TARDISes, specifically exteriors. I'll first mention the model itself, the door file, and then the file that adds the exterior to the game. For this section, I'll be working with May's Epsimo exterior model. Let's create ourselves a resource pack and start working on the model. The TARDIS model is just a Java JSON, but it has some specific things added. First being, of course, the doors. You must create folders in Blockbench, or bones, to group off the doors. These can have any name you wish, and yes, you can have as many doors as you want. Now that we have our doors grouped, we need to set the pivot point to where we want them to rotate. If you want your doors to move instead of rotate, this part doesn't matter. If you don't know, you can change the pivot point of a group like this. Now that we have our doors, I will mention a really cool feature with TARDISes, the alpha map. The alpha map is a file that can be automatically generated or created by you. This will affect how the TARDIS appears when it's rematerializing and dematerializing. This is what no alpha map looks like, this is what the generated version looks like, and this is a customized alpha map. With the Epsimo, we want to give it a custom alpha map so it can remat and demat purple. To create an alpha map, we do the same thing as a light map, but have the words alpha map with no spaces this time. When exporting our TARDIS model, we must tick the box, is this a TARDIS? And now we're done with the model. I've placed the model in my model folder and the textures in my textures folder. Moving on to the doors JSON file, this will allow the TARDIS doors to move when they're being interacted with. First off, the file must be in the same folder and have the same name as your TARDIS model, with underscore door attached at the end. Like every JSON file, we'll need to mark the start of the object with parentheses, like this. We will then put in door animations, in quotes, a colon, and then a square bracket. And these square brackets can be any amount of doors you want. Make sure that all but the last one has a comma. Let's write this one by hand. We start with curly brackets, and we will have the values shape name, mode, axis, amplifier, and door type. Shape name will be the name of the group you made for the door. For the Epsimo, I put right door and left door. I'll do the right first. Mode. This is between two values, translate and rotate. Translate is another word meaning move, and you should know what rotate means. In this case, I want the door to rotate, so I'll put rotate. Axis, this is the axis in which we want the door to move or rotate. This can be X, Y, or Z. Next is the amplifier. 
This is to say how much the door will move or rotate. For rotation, this number will be in degrees and multiplied with by 90. So 90 degree doors will be 1. We want it to be a little less though, so let's do 0 0.9. Positive numbers will rotate around the axis clockwise, and negative will go counterclockwise. When moving the doors instead of rotating, however, the number is multiplied with 0 0.8 per block. This means each pixel is 0 0.05. For door type, we will have two options, right and left. You can probably guess, but doors with the right as their door type will open as the first door. The left is the second door. Now I will make the next one for the left door. The only difference is the rotation is now counterclockwise, the left door group is chosen, and its door type is left. I'm going to mention again, don't forget the comma here. Now you can have as many of these doors as you want, and even have multiple for the same door, like these examples. And with this file completed, we'll put it in the same folder as our model. We've now done the asset stuff, so let's do the data pack things. You'll need to create a data pack for which is independent from the resource pack. We will be creating a file in the folder data, Dalek mod, TARDIS exteriors. This can have any name as long as it's a JSON file and follows Minecraft's file naming rule, which is you can only do lowercase letters, numbers, dots, dashes, and underscores. I'm going to make the file epsimo.json. We will start the file with base parentheses and add in these values, exterior name, interior path, model path, XP value, unlockable, desk, which is short for description, is default selection, door open sound, and door close sound. Exterior name will be the name we give the exterior, I'll put epsimo. Interior path will be the interior that generates if the TARDIS is placed and that interior is chosen. This links to a file in the TARDIS interiors folder. I don't have an interior yet, so I will put Dalek mod TARDIS default, which is the default interior from the mod. Model path will be an array of models, so it needs square brackets. I'll only have one model, so I'll put that in. But as you can see in the police box exterior, it has a whole bunch. XP value will be the cost to buy the exterior in the chameleon panel. I'll set this to be 100. Unlockable will be true or false, and determines if it will show up in the chameleon panel. If it's false, you can still get it through circuits, or if it's a default selection, you can choose that. I want to be able to use this in the chameleon panel, so I'll set this to true. Desk is the description of the interior. It will be shown off here in the chameleon panel. I'll just write insert cool description here because I can't think of anything right now. Is default selection is also a true or false and determines if you will be able to access the exterior when you grow or place a new TARDIS. Door open sound and door close sound don't have to be in the file, but if you want a custom one you can put it. To show this off, as it's a tutorial, I will make the open sound Minecraft's cat noise. Now that we have the exterior in the data pack, we will be able to load in both the resource packs and data packs into our world to use it. TARDIS interiors are broken up into two parts, the actual interior and then the data file adding it to the ARS or TARDISes that have that specific interior upon generating. It's a rule of thumb for Dalekmon to have these interiors be 32 by 32 blocks and have it line up with the other interiors corridors. We will be creating a data pack for this. Here is a TARDIS interior by DHI, the crystalline interior, and I'm going to add it in. It's best to go with the northwest bottom corner and place yourself a block. Look at this block and press F3 showing the debug menu to see the coordinates of the block. The coordinates are right there. This will be used to double check the position. Now at this corner block, go into spectator mode and go one block above it and run Dalekmon Skem Pose 1. Make sure that the coordinates displayed in the message are the ones in the F3 menu. Then do the same for the opposite corner and use Pose 2 instead of Pose 1. We will now run Dalekmon Skem Save and put a name. I'll put Crystalline. The file is now in your mods folder in Dalekmon Schematics. Put this file in our data pack in data Dalek mod TARDIS schematics. We will now be making the JSON file for the interior, adding it to the game. Create a file in the folder data Dalek mod interiors in your data pack. And this can have any name, again, as long as it's a JSON file and follows Minecraft's file naming rule. I'll be naming it crystalline.json. In this JSON, we'll start with the base parentheses and add in these values. Default spawn rotation, door offset, which is an array, interior name, interior file, Preview, 
X, Y, and Z offset and recipe, which has a parts array inside of it. For default spawn rotation, the number is the rotation value in which is usually facing away from the door. For Dalek mod, interiors have this as 180 to easily match up with the corridors. To get this number, go to the spot you want to enter at and open the F3 menu, look in how you want to enter, and check this number here and put it as the value. Door offset is the offset of where the door is from the northwest bottom corner. To calculate the door position, we go to the door again and get the coordinates with the F3 menu. It will be here. Make sure to write these down. You'll need to subtract these three numbers from the northwest bottom corner, which is a good thing we made at pose 1, so it's still in chat. The calculated coordinates will be the door offset. Don't forget the commas. Interior name is the name we will give the interior. I'll simply write crystalline. Interior file links to a skem file in the TARDIS schematics folder of a data pack. For us, we have tutorial crystalline. Preview image is a path to a texture file. This is optional and I don't have any images, but to show it off, I'll put the default TARDIS image, Delicmod textures, GUI, interior selection, TARDIS default.png. For X, Y, and Z offset, these will be block offsets of the interior when spawning. It will help when aligning your interior to corridors. A good thing to know is the floor block at the corridor should be the second block from the bottom. If it's not, we must offset it. My corridors here are at the bottom block, so we must shift it up by making my Y offset 1, and we can get rid of the other offsets since they are 0. For recipe parts, this will be any amount of items for the ARS. Each item will contain the value item and quantity. I bet you guys can figure out what those are, but I will put in Dalekmon Crystalline. And to show off multiple items, I'll add a flight lever. That's all for this file, so we save and we're done. Let's put it in the data pack and test it out. To add dimensions to Dalekmod's dimensional selector, we simply create a JSON file in our data packs at data Dalekmod TARDIS destinations, again following naming rules. In the file we have the base parentheses like always and have the values dimension name, dimension key, dimension icon, and coordinate, which is an array. Dimension name will be the name we give this dimension. I'll write the end, as that's what I'll be adding in. Dimension key will be the dimensional ID. You can find this in the F3 menu here when you're in the dimension. For the end, it's Minecraft end. We then have dimension icon, which is the path to a texture. I don't have any images right now, so I'll just put Dalekmod textures planets overworld.png. Now for coordinate, this is a way to lengthen the time it takes to get to said dimension. Think of it as a grid between all the different dimensions, and if it's really far from one dimension, it will take much longer. If it's closer, it will take less time. For the end dimension, I'll put it here, and make it take a bit of time to go to. Once that's done, we're done. Just load the data pack in and play. If you're making a mod adding new roundels, or just want to mess around with the roundel builder, you probably want to add recipes to it. To do so, create a JSON file in our data pack at data Dalek mod roundel recipes following naming rules. Add the base parentheses and put in these values, input 1, input 2, and output, which will have the values item, amount, and nbt inside. Input 1 is the item ID for the first item, I'll put salmon. Input 2 is the item ID for the second item, this time I'll do a bucket of water, and now let's do the output. The item is the ID again. I'll make this salmon in a bucket. Amount is how much you want to get out of the recipe. I'll put 1. And NBT is the item's NBT in a string. If you have quotes in the NBTs, make sure to add a backslash. This is the NBT to give it the name I was made in the Roundel Builder. Save this file and you are done with creating the recipe. Here it is in action. Again, if you're making a mod or just want to create recipes for Dalekmon's engineering table, this is how. Create a JSON file following the naming rules and put it in data Dalekmon engineering recipe. This is a much simpler file having just input 1, input 2, input 3, and output, all of them being item IDs. Here I will make the recipe for a creeper spawn egg. Input 1 I'll put TNT, input 2 I'll make an egg, input 3 I'll put an end crystal. And in output I'll put the creeper spawn egg. Save the file and you're done with this recipe as well. Here I am making the creeper spawn egg. 
You may want to share the things you've created with us at Swid Community more than just in the Creations channel. If you want to add your mod add-on, resource pack, or data pack into the add-ons channel, send a direct message to either me or May, also known as Rainbow Destiny, in Discord asking to add your add-on to the channel. And that's it for data packs with Dalekmon. Thank you very much for watching the video, I hope it helped. And I want to mention one last thing before I go. If you have both a resource pack and data pack, and you don't want to put them separately in your game, you can pair these by making a very basic mod. You can create it from scratch, or even use an automated program like mCreator to merge the two. And with that mention, if you have your own mod that you're making, you can add these files in to interact with Dalek Mod. Maybe you want a TARDIS that gets added in if you have both mods installed, like a crossover. Again, thank you for watching, and goodbye.